long way. For us to sit high on this panel and discuss inclusivity, it is a big step that we have made as African and African uh, leaders. I think we should give ourselves a hand up for that. Because before you wouldn't have such conferences sitting down and talking about infertility. Like you had even uh, before uh, other speakers, it is a taboo. It is it's like you're a cast woman when you don't have a child. Everybody looks down on you. And to have uh, somebody like me in a leadership plan, to even start talking about my own experience, it's, it's very difficult. But then when you become a leader, you have a choice, either to tell your story or to let other people tell your story. So I, I, I chose that uh, level of saying, this is the platform that the people have given me. I have to use the platform, this platform in order to create awareness so that other people before me or behind me would not go through the same problem. Part of the video that you view, you haven't seen is I had to adopt my own child because he was born from a surrogate mother. And the law that we had in Kenya, that still is in Kenya, does not recognize surrogacy. So after my baby was born, the surrogate mother was a good friend of mine. So she had agreed um, for me to take the baby from day one. But then legally, that baby was not mine. I mean, after everything that we produced, the agreement from the lawyers to show that the baby is mine because that was my egg and um, my ex-husband's sperm, but still they could not recognize that. The law that was in place says the woman who gives birth is the mother of the baby. So those who have children and a surrogate uh, process, they are not recognized by law. So I decided to, to take a longer journey because surrogacy is not new in our country. Women go through the same process or couples go through that process, but then what they do, they go through the back door to get you know legal certificates for their children, for their children. But then here I am. I've, I've declared interest to become a leader. Nobody has ever seen me pregnant. Then what do I do? I said, I'll take the long journey. It doesn't matter how long it's going to be. It was in and out of the courts and seeing the lawyers and the judges. It took us almost four years to now be able now to legally be recognized as the mother of, of my son. So I went through the normal ad adoption process. When I got to Parliament, I said we have to change this law because we cannot let uh, any couple or any woman to go through this painful journey. And when I got there, uh, another member of Parliament who was there, uh, previous Parliament before me, had a draft um, on, on IVF. So what we did, we put our heads together and I championed for, for, for that bill. We, we called upon all the stakeholders, all the, the doctors and people who are in charge of infertility and, and IVF clinics. And together we came up with a very good bill. And um, in this bill, it recognizes you as a, as a woman who gets a baby, either through adoption or through surrogacy, uh, surrogacy process, to be identified as a mother of, of that child. And not just that, also to regulate the, the IVF process that has been happening in the, in the country, and also to create awareness to tell people that there are other methods that you can use if you cannot conceive naturally. As we've seen in the video, like lack of information, lack of knowledge is um, something that's really uh, making people suffer, making women suffer. Women are the ones who carry all the embarrassment, they carry the shame, they, they cry tears at, at night, and sometimes they're not the ones who are carrying that problem. It is a shared responsibility. I want to thank Matt because through this initiative, it has opened up conversation. It has opened up, uh, you know, talking amongst the men. Men are coming out also to talk about their problems. And one by one, we are seeing them accompanying their spouses to the clinic so that they know that it's not just a, a woman's problem, but also a man has that problem too. And uh, we are happy because now, um, just one week ago, we passed the, uh, uh, we changed from IVF bill to assisted uh, reproductive uh, technology so that now we can cover all the other methods that are, are, that are available, not just IVF. So already we passed that bill at the National Assembly and it is the first bill actually in, in, in Kenya. Maybe in Africa, I'm not, I'm not sure about other countries. In Africa, it is, it is the, the first bill in, in Africa. And right now it has just been taken
take it to Senate, and after Senate, it will come back to the National Assembly so that after that, the President now can, can sign it in, into law. So it is a, a biggest achievement that we have achieved as a women parliamentarians in Kenya, and uh, we're not going to stop there, because if we don't take it down to where the people are, lack of information will still uh, you know, be like a, a bondage around them. Because sometimes we make good laws, but then uh, implementing those laws becomes an issue. And if they're not implemented, then we're not going to realize the, the, the culture shift that, that we are talking about. Because when we have more information going down to the people, then you find out they start talking about it freely and they have access to information, access to, to medical um, treatment uh, for early prevention, early detection, and also so that the, the price of it or the cost of it can be affordable. Thank you very much.